Guess what? This is Law & Order SVU Season 4, Episode 24. Perfect. We open up and this convenience store owner just got robbed. He ran into the alley. Just then we hear gunshots. Police, drop your weapons. The music is super intense. But the good news is we got him. So did anybody get hit with all this gunfire? Yeah, the perp in the arm and oh, what's this? There's a little girl slumped next to the dumpster with a bullet hole in her temple. Shit. Jump ahead and Benson and Stabler are on the scene. Don't you think this is a little weird that Craig called us in? But who might they run into? Uh-huh, that dude from Internal Affairs that nobody likes is here. And they're like, oh, we get it. It might have been a cop that shot the girl. So you need us to cover your ass. Call it a favor. Benson is not having it. For all the times that you've tripped us up and now you're asking for our help, boy, you got a set of balls on you. Hey, if you don't want to do it for me, do it for her. Ugh, fine. So we jump ahead and it's daylight. Benson and Stabler are working with the crime tech captain to figure out whose bullet went where. Okay, bullet one is Officer Bailey, bullet two is the perp, and bullet three is Officer Taylor. They shoot some lasers around to figure out the trajectory. And guess what? It was the perp's bullet who hit the girl. Every cop's collective beehole just loosens just a little. So then we jump to the morgue and Emmy Warner has some news. The problem is your victim was already dead when she was shot. What? She was still warm at the scene, but rigor had set in when she got to the morgue, which means she had died five or six hours before the time of the shooting. Well, what clues do we have? Roach marks all up her arm and they wouldn't have bitten her if she would have been moving around. So she was either tied down or too weak to move. Among her personal effects, was this little infinity necklace. Here's the really weird part. She had brand new ribbons in her hair and a nice blanket wrapped around her. So they're thinking that she was dumped after she died. Whoever left her there must have really loved her. Munch is here. Oh my gosh. They have an ID and you're never gonna believe it. Samantha Tasla. Oh my gosh. Samantha Tasla? I have no idea who that is. So apparently she's this girl who disappeared from Philly like eight months ago. Her heartbroken parents are on their way here, but when they show up, they literally don't recognize a single thing that Samantha had on her. Are you sure? Not even this necklace? I've never seen that in my life. Hmm. Speaking of this necklace, we've got some nerd jeweler taking a look at. Oh, it's solid platinum. We're able to track the tiny initials on the back to the jeweler, Ross St. Clair. And when they catch up with Mr. Ross St. Clair, he doesn't recognize Samantha's picture either. I don't get a lot of teenagers in here. My stuff is too expensive. Why, did something happen to her? Yeah, she's dead. Jeez. He does recognize that necklace though. Custom made. The dude who had it made, his name was Garrett Lang. Not only did he order that one, he wanted them in bulk. This guy orders a hundred of them. Gives me 80 grand up front. Shit, obviously we need to talk to Garrett Lang. So Lang is a doctor, or at least he's Ashton Kutcher playing a doctor. What kind of doctor, you ask? One in his words that can make Stabler a new man on the field, not to mention in the bedroom. A uh, weird human growth hormones. That's what this guy does. And he gives that necklace to all of his patients. He doesn't recognize Samantha's picture, but he also isn't going to give up any confidential records. So the team is starting to like zero in on Lang. So what do we know about him? Well, he's got extensive medical credentials, but instead of doing something meaningful, he's making rich people look hotter. What would he want with a young girl? Maybe he's a pedophile? Whoa, we're jumping way ahead if we go from made a necklace to likes little kids. We don't even have the autopsy done yet. Cragen's like, well, why don't you go to Dick's Sporting Goods, get a tent and maybe some prepackaged meals and camp out in front of the morgue until it's done. We jump back to the morgue and Emmy Warner is like, here's the shit. We found traces of facial tissue and dried saliva on Samantha's cheek. The cause of death was a blood clot in her lung caused by severe dehydration and Here's the weirdest shit yet. We took a peek at her reproductive organs, the inside bit, and she had a full baker's dozen eggs released, which only happens with like fertility drugs, like in vitro fertilization. In vitro, well, why would a 14 year old need help getting pregnant? I don't know, but it worked. Samantha was carrying an eight week fetus. Ugh. Okay, so we've got a dead 14 year old who is pregnant, but also doped up on fertility treatment. And our prime suspect is a doctor who specializes in human fertility. Cabot, is that enough? I cannot offer an arrest warrant based on circumstantial evidence, but I can give you a subpoena for his records. Records, you say? What do they find? This dude's super rich, not a big surprise, but he is writing off a whole bunch of donations to the Foundation for Knowledge Expansion. 
It's a nonprofit that targets, I mean, help girls at risk. Sounds fishy. Let's go check that shit out. Benson and Stabler are outside the foundation watching these girls go in and out. And Benson, from quite a distance, recognizes a girl from the back of her head or something. Hey, that girl looks familiar. Where do I know her from? If she had totally different hair and clothes, she would look just like a different runaway that I remember. And of course they remember her name was Jessica Marsh taken from the east side presumed kidnap. What the hell did we get ourselves into? When we knock on the door, a tall female hobbit answers. I'm Paula Haggerty and this is my school. Uh, Mrs. Haggerty, you're obviously under arrest. And as they're putting the cuffs on her, they see a little tattoo, which is obviously the thickest Sharpie that they could find. It's an infinity sign. It's for infinite potential. As they're walking her out, Stabler sees that Jessica runaway girl. Jessica, your family wants you back. My name isn't Jessica. It's Marjorie. You joined a cult and could choose your own name and you picked Marjorie? Lots of bad choices going on. So we're at the precinct and Haggerty's lawyer is like, I would like to know what charges are forthcoming. Okay, one, this woman's name is Lawyer Quentin and she is stupid pretty. <laughs> like, I can't even talk about it. And two, we'll start with kidnapping. Stabler's got Jessica in a different room. You can't understand. I can't leave Mrs. Haggerty. She loves me. She claimed she wasn't kidnapped. She ran away from home. Behind the glass, Cragen and Huang are chatting. So there's five girls and the other four were taken from around the country. Then he says that they are all high profile cases because each girl has come from a wealthy or upper class family. Alicia, is Cragen just saying the quiet part out loud now? And every girl reacted poorly to being found. But they also choose really stupid, ugly names. Is this Stockholm Syndrome? Worse, their devotion to Haggerty indicates some kind of brainwashing. Yeah, it's a cult. Huang thinks that maybe Samantha was being punished. Cults often reprogram their members by locking them up without food or water. Ooh, we should probably go back and check the place to make sure no other girls were being held captive. Back to the brownstone. But the second they walk in the door, Stable like what the hell every piece of furniture every desk everything is gone totally empty it's like no one was ever here the crazy thing is the whole brownstone was cleared out in like two hours none of the girls called anybody and they had Haggerty in custody so it must have been her lawyer whoever it is they're obstructing justice. All the not missing any more girls' parents are here. And they walk out of the precinct into the lobby just as Jessica's parents embrace her in a hug. And she like doesn't hug them back. Kind of leans into it like, ugh. We jump over to gorgeous lawyer Quentin's office. Not only is old lady Haggerty there, but so is Dr. Lang. And I got it. Lang is an exact cross between Michael Sarah and Ashton Kutcher. Mike tin sh shirt sir whatever can we help you who cleaned out the brownstone how would we know also who's this guy dr george huang i'm fbi all three of these douchebags have an answer for everything and huang is like you're enjoying this aren't you by the time they leave he's got him pegged he's a classic narcissist and he's calling the shots so they think hot lawyer joan quentin and old lady haggard are under his spell just like the girls were stabler's like well you saw those girls not very attractive not good at anything probably got bad grades in school She's a stabler. Well, one thing is clear. They didn't find Haggerty accidentally. They were fucking targeted. Let's figure out how. So we go back to Samantha's poor grieving parents and they're like, hang on. First, she said she was homeless. Now you're saying she was in a cult? Ah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so what was going on before she went missing? Started hanging out with bad influence kids. So then they put her in tutoring because her grades were slipping. After school place that would help you reach your full potential. <gasps> Wait, what did you just say? She started hanging out with some kids that were, a, you know, keep going, the last part. A place that helped you reach your full potential. And what's the name of this center? Knowledge Builders. No fucking kid in their right mind would want to go to Knowledge Builders. We show up there and talk to the director, fucking Amy Klobuchar. She's got a Sharpie Infinity tattoo as well. Bring her in, she lawyers up, but it's too late because we have the link. In fact, there was a Knowledge Builder in every city that these kids went missing from. Well, we need somebody to pin him down, so let's talk to the girls. So of course, Stabler's in dad mode and he goes in. What do you think about Dr. Lang? He's a wonderful man. He's going to save the world. Oh yeah? 
how the music picks up and the camera zooms in. So the ozone layer is going away and then eventually everybody will be infertile. So the only way that we can reproduce and save the human population is by cloning people. Jessica, are you pregnant? Yup. She says he took cells of a baby who died and put them into her eggs. I'm going to give this grieving couple their baby back. <laughs> We're busting into Lang's secret medical office. I'm making medical history. Well, you're going to jail. There's just one problem, Doc. Cloning is illegal. Well, people told Jesus and Darwin that stuff was illegal. Okay, I'm so, so you're comparing yourself to Jesus? You know what? It doesn't matter. We're charging you with aggravated sex abuse and also fraud and also being such a douchebag. Cab is there with a reality check. Neither of those charges are going to stick. Maybe the douchebag one. But we've got to have something that ties him to Samantha's death. We're back talking to Warner and the DNA on the saliva is back. It's Haggerty. Also, that fucking fetus she was carrying, that was not a clone. Half of the genes were hers, which means half of the genes are a father's. I wonder who the father could be. I didn't guess that the same father of Samantha's baby is also the same father of Jessica's baby. Dad Stabler is going to uh, break the news. <sighs> Jessica, do you know who your baby's father is? Baby doesn't have a father. <laughs> Duh, it's a clone. Well, buckle up because guess what? That baby's father is Lang. Oh, no, I'm helping a family whose baby died. No, it's my fault that she's dead. I'm sorry, what? Samantha told Jessica that she thought Lang was a fake. She was gonna go to the police. So Jessica told on her. And then she took Samantha away. Holy shit. So we jump ahead to the trial. Jessica is on the stand testifying about the room that Samantha got brought to. Now a hot Joan Quentin gets up to ask her some questions. You're just as responsible for her death as Mrs. Haggerty is, aren't you? Aren't you? Objection. Withdrawn. Leaves poor Jessica in tears. Now Dr. Weenie Lang is on the stand and he's waxing poetically about medical visionaries, which of course he thinks he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you were taking your own sperm and fertilizing the eggs of 14 year old girls that you had brainwashed, as well as taking a ton of money from families by promising them cloned babies that had died. Well, when you put it like that. Okay, then when Joan Quentin gets up to redirect, it is very clear that she is saving Lang's ass and throwing Haggerty totally under the bus, pointing all the fingers. Cabot's like, uh, oh shit, and calls her hot lover defense attorney to swoop in. You're sitting down and talking to Haggerty. You really should switch lawyer. I advise you to listen to Miss Cabot. She knows what she's doing. Boy, does she know what she's doing. What does it matter if they throw me in jail? I'm still guilty. The story comes out that Miss Haggerty had a daughter that ran away because they did not have a good relationship. She's been struggling with the guilt of that ever since. That's why I wanted to work with teenage girls. So in a genius move, Cabot brings in Jessica. I love my parents, but I love you too. <sighs> Lang is exploiting your pain. Only you can stop him. So we jump back to the trial and Mrs. Haggerty is on the stand singing like a canary. She said that Dr. Lang would come in every night after they had gone to bed. And on the sixth night, she tried to give Samantha some water, but he got there just in time and took it away. Samantha died in my arms. Oh my gosh. Give this hobbit an Emmy for this performance because it literally had me gasping, gasping for breath. Of course, Lang, this fucking weenie stands up and is like, why are you betraying me? Dr. Lang, shut the fuck up or I'm remanding you. Cats out of the bag, folks. Science waits for no one. Get this asshole out of here. If not me, somebody will clone humans and screen goes black, <laughs> dick wolf. And that was Law and Order SVU season four, episode 24. Jum jum. <laughs>